hello everyone welcome back to my channel so today we are going to discuss about learn complete axios in react js so what is actually axios in react js and why we are going to use it what is the importance of this and why we are not using the fetch and why we are we are preferring to use the axios so let's get started so before getting start uh, i need to tell you that if you have not subscribed to my channel you can subscribe to my channel the channel is Amir Parvez and the course, the complete React.js developer course. In this course, I've uploaded a lot of videos, a lot of uh, uh, wonderful projects and a lot of demos. So you can perform those demos and you can understand the importance of React because nowadays React is very much in demand in a lot of tech companies are hiring uh, very uh, experienced and uh, new hiring of this React is on board. So guys, you can uh, learn this course and you can get the very good salaries on, on, because of this project. So let's get started. And before that, if you have not uh, downloaded the uh, source code of the current op operations uh, in ReactJS using the Firebase database, you can download from here and you can understand all these concepts. If you have missed any code, you can do that. So guys, you can also get the presentations because for this Axios, I have created a presentation. You can get this presentations from here. So let's get started now. So Axios in React.js. Axios is a library that serves to create HTTP requests that are presented externally. So actually, what is Axios? What is Axios actually? And, and this, these are all the topics of Axios in React.js. What is Axios? Why we are using the Axios? How to install Axios? Axios request methods? Axios response objects? Axios get request? Axios post request? And error handling? We are going to discuss all these topics in this uh, project. So I will try to do covered in this one video. If if I couldn't, I will make another video for that. And what is Axios? Axios is an HTTP client library based on promises. So you are, I hope you are all familiar with the promises. Promises are actually when we do not get the uh, data from the request we made, uh, we perform the then operations that after after one step, what we will do next. Let's suppose if we make a get call to the users, get users. If we get the user, then after that, what action we need to perform? If we get the data, then what we need to do? If we get the error, then what we need to do? So these are all the promises and you can now watch the, uh, you can write in the comments if you need a video on the promise, I will make that. It makes sending asynchronous HTTP request to a rest endpoint. So it actually send an async calls to uh, uh, API endpoints and which was easy to perform the CRUD operation as well as these rest endpoints could be external APIs like Google API, GitHub or any test API or whatever API you are going to use. You can use your own APIs as well as. So this is actually Axios and you know Axios uh, nowadays Axios is mo more much in demand. Uh, previously developers used the uh, fetch as well as but, uh, because a fetch API and Axios are both the most common native uh, JavaScript uh, alternatives for sending multiple Request guys, right guys? So moving forward, uh, why Axios? Axios and FHAP are most common, uh, two most common native JavaScript alternatives for sending their multiple requests right now, nowadays. So however, Axios, Axios have some advantages over the Fetch API because normally, you know, uh, we usually use the Fetch APIs, but now Axios have uh, some more advantages over the Fetch API. What are those? Some unique features we can discuss now. Support multiple request and response introspection. So it support actually multiple requests. We can send the multiple calls at one time to, to endpoints and we can ha also get the multiple responses as well as so we can manage all those things. We can we can have effective error handling. Uh, uh, it was a better er effective error handling than the fetch. And we can also uh, client side support for uh, cross site requests for GRIP. So uh, protection, it, it is also providing all this uh, supports as well as and response time order uh, also give the response time order and begin able to cancel the request which is a good feature so we also we can use uh, these cancel requests as well as support for older version uh, internet explorer 11 so you need to remember this before working on this and automated json data translation which is a good thing because normally we need to uh, do all these things but uh, this was uh, already added in this uh, axios Right, and also support uh, for upload progress, uh, which is also a very good feature. And developer increasingly choosing Axios GitHub over Fetch API to send HTTP requests due to its powerful feature. 
so yeah this is true that these are very powerful features if we all have uh, if we have all these features it, it would be great to work on the axios so let's see what's next axios request method so uh, normally we have get uh, get calls sometimes uh, post calls uh, delete and put calls so axios support actually all this call calls you can see your axios with delete head and if you need to pass, pass option calls and post calls put calls and patch calls and axios request so these are all the actually parameters here if you need to pass the axios request we need to pass the configure configurations if you need to pass the get call url and configurations and if you need to part the delete call you need you can see the all these uh, parameters here and then we have Azure response object. So when we send an HTTP request to remote servers or APIs, we actually get the specific uh, response objects from the APIs. And Azure handle the data like this. Uh, it will return the data, the payload returned from the server. Statuses, we can check the statuses, the HTTP code, and then the status text, it, either it is okay or it's some errors. Uh, we get from the error message from the servers. Axios actually give us all this information and, and then the header sent by the server and then configuration, the original co uh, requested configurations and then the request object, what actually the request object was. So these are all the information we get from the um, uh, response object from, uh, in, while, while working in the Axios. Okay, so now let's do some practical example how we can actually install the Axios and how we can actually create the get request call using the Axios and how we can actually post call and error handling. So I'm going to perform all these action. So let's get started. So here is our project. And in this project, I'm going to stop this first. And in this project, I, I need to mention that you actually need to write this NPM install Axios. So once you click, first I have created one project, HTTP using React, right? And then I, I I write npm install Axios. So once you uh, run this command, it is going to install the Axios in your current project. And you can see here, uh, this version of the Axios is installed, 1.2.2. So this is the version which was installed in our pro uh, in our current project. So after, after running this, you need to run this project, uh, npm start. So it's very simple, but it's, it's a very powerful uh, HTTP uh, you can say a library, a JavaScript library, and it's very helpful. It's very usable nowadays. You can uh, find a lot of uh, helping uh, uh, tools and also a lot of helping examples from internet as well as uh, to get all this uh, run. So in this example, guys, I'm going to run this JSON placeholder dot type code dot com. Here I'm going to use this uh, test calls actually uh, to get the data, how I can get the data, pose our data and perform other actions as well as. So if I click on this uh, JSON placeholder, I, I can see uh, this URL, I'm going to use this URL. So this is our actually demo, Axios HTTP request to REST endpoints. So now I'm going to add some folders here. I'm naming HTTP Axios calls, something like this. And now I'm going to say it, file, posts. I have some posts, so I'm going to say it like this. So this is a shortcut to actually uh, create the code. So now what I need to do, now I'm going to, um, yes, so now I'm going to say it like something like this. I'm going to say H1, I'm going to say it, get call using Axios, right? Great. Okay. And now here, what, I, what I'm going to do it, uh, yes. So, uh, you know, uh, now uh, on the page load, I need to actually make a, a call to API. So I'm going to use use effect. So once our pages get loads, it will actually bring the data. I hope you all are familiar with this use effect. If you are not familiar with use effect, uh, you can uh, see in my previous videos, I have created a complete detailed video on this, on this, all this concept use effect and all the hooks, which I'm going to use in this uh, top in this project. You can see our use effects. Yes, here are the videos use effects and dependencies and, and it's cleanup functions. So I've created all these videos you can watch and learn. So use effects and now in use effects, I'm going to say it. 
like once the page get load i need to call the data from the api right guys so comma here arrays arrays means uh, once the page uh, go, uh, gets loaded on the first time it will perform this action so i'm not going to write the code here i'm going to make another function here i'm going to say it const get post right so i'm going to say like this right so now what i'm going to do i'm going to say axios dot so you see here uh, once i write this axio it's actually imported by itself now you need to write get so get is a, is a default function given by the axios so now i need to pass the url you can see here we need to pass the url so i'm, I'm going to copy this url now So now, as I already told you uh, just before that, Axios is actually an HTTP client library based on promises. So now I'm going to uh, write a code uh, like the promises so you can understand what are the actually promises. So I'm going to say get data from this URL, then I will get some response and Whatever response I will get, I'm going to write in the console log and response, right? Okay. So after that, I'm going to say then catch if there's some error. I need to log those errors and error, right? So now. Okay, great guys. So it looks good. So what this code is actually doing, now you can see here, axios.get, it, it will make a call to this URL and then the, this, these are our promises, the, all right? Then after then, after that, I need to perform these actions. I will say dot then and response, whatever response we get, we will log it. And if I get some error in, in fetching the data, it will write the errors here, right guys? So now I'm going to call this function inside the use effect and we will see what happened. Okay, great. So let's call this on the here. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to say it import from I'm going to find the URL HTTP exist calls and then post great guys so now if I go here I'm going to open the F12 to see what actually happens I'm going to refresh this so once I refresh this I did it multiple times so now you can see we get the data so here uh, in the data uh, in the response dot data we, we can see all the objects from the api we get so if you go on the api we can see here we are getting this data right one and this data great guys so now uh, you can see how easy and how uh, easily we can get the data and fetch the data from using the axios from the apis right guys so i'm going to close this now i'm going to actually show this data on the ui so for showing the data i need to store data somewhere in our component so what i'm going to do i need to store here so i'm going to use the use effect you all are familiar with this uh, use state sorry i'm going to use a use state so you all are familiar with this use state if you are not i am in uh, you can see in the previous video i have explained in detail about the use states right so you you can see here the use states now so i need to call here that's why i'm getting this error great guys so now whatever data I will get, I need to store, uh, I'm going to store that data in the use states. 
and it's not a complex task now i'm going to say set post and here i'm going to say response dot data as simple because in the response data you can see you can see the objects so now i get the data in the in the set objects so what and now i'm going to do i'm going to actually use the map reducer to actually run uh, to show all the data on the ui so now i'm going to add one more div here i'm going to write it post dot length if the post dot length is greater than zero and if i need i i will show this data and i'm going to say it post dot map and now i'm going to say post and then i'm going to say it another div and in this i'm going to say it post dot title great and i need to check yes and after this i'm going to say null because if, if there is no data i'm going to show the null but i'm going to pass some id here like key post dot id id as a key here right guys so now if i go on on our page and refresh this i didn't get the data why we didn't get the data you need to check this out we write post is greater than then i said post dot map which is good post which also seems fine okay it looks good so now you can see here uh, we get all the titles but uh, guys it's too much so I, I, I it's very difficult actually to read so i'm going to say it, something like this i'm going to slice this i'm going to show uh, the top we can show top six records like this so i'm going to use a slice and it, it will actually get the first six records for us so now let's see yeah that's great so i need to apply some css here because uh, it's not looking uh, very attractive so i'm going to say post.css so i have already written the css so you can uh, I, i'm going to upload this css on on the github you can uh, download the css and all the projects from here on my github uh, you can write github slash amir project slash react js complete course so you can get from here right guys and now I'm going to use it here. So at the top, I need to import the CSS. And I'm going to say it post.css. Okay, great. So now I, you, I need to use this class. I have created one class post. So I need to use that class. I hope you all are familiar with all these things but not in my previous video i have completely uh, explained all this concept in detail right post okay if i go now and check out the output so you can see here uh, i have separated all this title in separate uh, divs and if you hover them they are changing their colors and text is looking much better now so this is how we are actually getting the uh, get calls and uh, showing the data on the outputs so it's a very simple call so you can see the get calls in the next video i'm going to show you how we can make the post calls and some error handling as well as so thank you very much guys and don't forget to subscribe and like my channel and also uh, your comments and your likes and your subscribes actually motivates me a lot so keep watching keep liking and keep subscribing my channel i'm doing all this hard work for all of you so you can learn more and give me good reviews thank you guys have a good day